What up, team? Happy hump day. It is Wednesday. What is going on? Um, obviously, immediately after I recommend Bitcoin pretty much to everyone, like this is something you have to do, that should from now on be a, a top sign, <laughs> a sign of the top of the cycle. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Bitcoin is, is up almost 100% in less than two months. So yeah, um, it's all good. But uh, do want to do a quick update today. Today's update is going to be mostly around mortgage rates. Uh, not just because there's some disinformation out there, but because we've kind of got uh, an enigma scenario going on. We have a situation that I did not think was possible, um, but it obviously is possible because it's happening right now. So we're going to take a look at that. Derek Evans here, VA home loan specialist. You've got VA questions. Give me a call, text, email. Want to buy, refi, give me a call, text, email. Let's get rid of this. Let's jump over here. 23 bips today, baby. 23 bips. Who knew? Who knew it could even happen? Uh, remember what we were looking at was this trend line right here. I wanted to see if we could get through this. And if you remember on Monday, I was like, you know what? This is the real, this is the real deal right here. And it was it Friday. I think it was Friday. I don't think I did a video Monday. I was looking at this going, okay, at best, best case scenario, we're going to come up to this and probably going to get beat down, probably going to lose some steam here. But reality is, if you are a bond seller, if you're a bond holder and you want to sell your bonds, it doesn't make sense to keep biting off your own nose to spite your face and to keep selling at these lower prices. It makes more sense to back and go, you know what? The Federal Reserve is still buying tons of mortgage bonds. In fact, the taper hasn't even begun yet. They're still buying billions and billions of dollars a day. So if they're going to do that, if they're going to keep buying bonds, wait for a better time to sell. And there's a, a, a bunch of stops that got blown out on this candle today, just blew out through these resistance levels. Um, but yesterday was the big day because yesterday we oscillated. As you can see, we got as low as here yesterday. I should zoom in a little bit on this here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. So yesterday, you know, we got, and I need to get myself out of the way. Sorry, one man, high school production here. There we go. So yesterday, um, so this is today right here, this candle. This is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? This is Friday. Now on Friday, things didn't look good. You know, the downtrend was in, it's been cascading. Now, you know, we've got all these resistance levels above us. In fact, this article was published today on CNBC. Mortgage rates rise to an eight-month high, tanking refinancing demand. But they're always talking about the previous week. So you got to remember that. They're talking about the previous week. So if you look at the previous week, yeah, we did close right here at like 102.20. But look what's happened since. Now we're closing at 102.72. So that's 52 basis points that we've improved in the last three days, but the news is still talking about last week. And that's why those articles are about worthless, worthless, because it's not up-to-date information. Um, and this is truly up-to-date information. And what's really good about this, I'm gonna go ahead and refresh just to erase everything. Um, what's really interesting about this is whenever you have a downtrend like this, <clears throat> okay, whenever you have a downtrend and where and the market is keying off of it, in other words, you can tell that it is something that is holding. And that was the thing that was really kind of clear and really clean about this one is that it really, really, really looked like it was going to hold. Even on Monday when we got the big update, it was like, okay, it's just coming. It's just light. It's very, very magnetic. These trend lines are very magnetic. They draw price action to it, especially ones like this. And so it was like, okay, they're just, the sellers just waiting around for it to come back up to that trend line. They're going to nail it. Um, and they did. But look here, yesterday it didn't work. I didn't get a chance to make a video yesterday, but look at this wick. It's a very bullish candle. Very bullish candle. When you get on the other side of these trends, you tend to see a lot of upward action, and that's what we saw today. So when you get on the other side of these trends, you're just going to stop a bunch of people out. Today, I can promise you, there was tens of millions of dollars lost by people who were thinking the same thing I was thinking last week, that it was all over and we should just pack our bags and go home. It's the reason you don't do that. Because a lot of times when you feel that way, it's right before the turnaround comes. 
And it's just the psychology of this stuff. It's so bizarre. But bottom line is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and reiterate. Lock your loans. Lock, lock, lock. If you've been waiting to refi for some reason, get locked in. Um, where there is headwinds, you know, headed up here. There are inflation. There is inflation data that's coming that's going to continue to be, you know, be bad. And that's going to hurt bonds. When you have situations like this, I mean, we're in a terrible scenario for mortgage bonds or any other kind of bonds. We've got four days in a row. We're up nicely. We're up really, really nicely. Because if you go back down to here, we closed at 102. So we're up 72 basis points in the last four business days. 72 basis points. That's a big move. That's a very bullish looking move. And if you look at it, it's like, okay, well, really all we have is this resistance level here. And then we've got another 50 basis points that we could grab. And that's possible. That's possible. We'll see how, how well the sellers do. The sellers lost yesterday a battle in a tight grouping. I mean, that's a pretty tight grouping right here. That's not a big candle all, all in all, but for it to have a huge wick on the bottom like that and to be on the other side of that trend line, it's bullish. It is, which would lead you to believe that rates might drop. It's a good day to lock. It's a good day to lock. Um, to just, it's a good day to lock. I would lock. You have a refi, floating, pr you know, pursuing it out there, doing something like that. I would lock. That'd be my suggestion. Get locked in. All right. Let's take a look at a couple things and we'll, we'll circle back to this. Dow is down 266 today. S&P 23, NASDAQ inched higher. This stuff, you know, is interesting because you continue to see companies report doing very, very well and their outlook and their, it looks really, really good. And so a lot of people have been asking me like, well, okay, hey, if inflation is so bad, how come so many companies are doing so well? Well, just remember, inflation just means there's too much money in the room. When there's too much money in the room, people buy stuff. I mean, right now there's people who are just dying. They have cash. They're just sitting on there. It's like, what do I do with this? There's so many people trying to buy properties. I can't even buy a freaking property. I haven't been able to all year. You know what's weird though about the Missouri market? They don't do counter offers. It's like first best. Otherwise, F you. They're not interested in countering people. It's just crazy. I just got to adjust my strategy somehow there. Um, crypto getting stung today. You know, this happens a lot in crypto. Remember, Bitcoin's up like 100%. I mean, we were just at 29,000, what, a couple months ago? So it's up 100% in a couple of months. It's going to need a breather. It's going to need a breather. Plain and simple. There's more ETFs on the way. There's just an insane amount of bullish news. The FDIC is talking to banks about how to custody crypto and insure it. The FDIC. I mean, this stuff is just unstoppable. Gold going nowhere. Gold is a road to nowhere. Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Oil got, yep, oil got dinged today. Down to 82 bucks. It's still in the 80s. Still looks pretty good. I'm um, feeling pretty good about that overall. And the only reason I brought this, this article up and the only reason I'll put it in there is just so you can know what not to pay attention to. A lot of people see this stuff though. And this is what they see. They go, oh, well, that's what the rate is. They said that uh, rate is now 3.3%. That's the average rate. It's not the rate. That's the average rate. So some people are getting higher. Some people are getting lower. Uh, but it's also last week. And as you just saw, since then, we've had a nice little run. Will it be over? I don't know. We got on the other side of this resistance. We're closing above this resistance right here. I kind of lock like another big candle, team, or maybe another couple. Maybe you get one up to here and then take another one here. I kind of I kind of like us getting to the 50-day moving average. And that is a huge win. This is going to create a little more activity on the refi side, which what this article is really pointing to is just the fact that, you know, the refinance slowdown is going to cause a little bit of, what's the best way to call it? A temper tantrum, um, a knee-jerk reaction in the mortgage market. I've already seen it. Some of these refi shops going, okay, the refis are gone. Um, we have this huge building to pay for and all this stuff. Uh, try to get purchase business, do trigger leads. Uh, people are getting harassed by mortgage people team. Not good. Not a good look guys. Don't do that. Please. I know there's a lot of mortgage people watch this. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Don't harass people. Look, um, people respect their distance if that's what they want, because people will let you know when they need you. You know, it's okay to check in. Nothing wrong with checking in. 
every couple of weeks, whatever. Hey, I'm here if you need me. That's fine. But people are telling me crazy stories about getting harassed by mortgage people right now. And it just makes everybody look bad. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, I would say the same thing for real estate too. You know, you don't want to harass people. You want to let them know you're there and you're available. You don't, you don't want them to forget about you. We don't need to harass anybody. Okay. A couple other things. Actually, I'm going to save that one for later. I'm going to save that one for later. We'll see what happens, but here's the next. Let me refresh this one more time. All right, so this is this is how we'll finish today. Looking at the bond chart. Just in case, you know, if there's some gamblers out there, if you really want to wait and see, like, okay, well, what price is the price? Well, let's just remember, i got to zoom out a little bit. The more There's a more macro trend, okay? The one we were looking at there, the downtrend we were looking at, that was a little bit more... Um, a little bit more micro. This one's a little bit more macro right here. Okay. So we look at this one. And you see that one, I mean, you got to get through the 50 and the 100 to get to that one. So that one is not looking, not looking like it's going to happen anytime soon. But then there's this one here. I got to try to get that as close as I could. This is the one. I think we could get some action with. It'd be cool to see if we can bust through the 25 and and, and interact with this downtrend here. It'd be inter interesting to see what happens with that. That would be very interesting because the other cascading downtrends that we've already gotten through, we can just take those off the map now. They're no longer relevant. Um, but it is always nice to know that this nice bullish wick candle we got right here was the result of being on the other side of a downtrend. It's usually a really good sign. So I'm, I'm, no, I'm neutral right now, and I've been bearish. I'm neutral, um, but I do know that the bottom line is bonds over the course of the next couple of years, there's a lot of reasons to sell your bonds and move your money to something else, a lot of reasons. And you're seeing the Federal Reserve slow down their purchases, and you ask yourself, are they trying to pull back the ease is that the goal of the Federal Reserve right here? Or are they actually trying to stop buying these assets that they know are basically worthless in an inflationary environment? I mean, if we have the people who've been telling us there's no inflation or telling us it's 5 to 6%, which is way outside of what's acceptable, even by their standards, and they're not even measuring the stuff that's the most inflated, the real numbers are probably in the high teens, low 20s. It just makes no sense to own bonds. It makes no sense. So is that the reason they're wanting to stop purchasing them? I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know that that's possible. And so I would definitely, if you own a lot of bonds, may want to take a look at some things. May want to take a look at some things. Okay. That's it for today, team. I'm going to go hit the phones. You guys have a great day. Share this video. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Let's help make everybody smarter about this stuff. And if you... Oh, I'm going to cover myself up. I want to buy or refi. Give me a call, text, shoot me an email, and I'm happy to help. Talk to you guys soon.